Today I'm partnering with Sister Mag Patterns to sew and share their slender ball gown. This is a beautiful dress perfect for formal events, anything from weddings to proms and holiday parties. This pattern has beautiful graceful details from its shaping darts to the back slit. I've left the link to the pattern below so you can check out all the details, grab a copy, and sew along with me. So grab that pattern, cut out your fabric, mark your notches, and let's get started. On the front of the dress we have a couple sets of darts. We have horizontal darts extending from the side seams, and we have vertical darts extending from those darts. We're going to start by pinning our vertical darts. I've marked them here faintly with my tracing wheel and tracing paper. Now I'm going to fold each dart in half and pin through one dart leg and out the other. Doing this for both vertical darts. Now I can take these darts to the sewing machine, sewing from the top to the point, leaving thread tails at the point so I can tie them in knots. And then press those darts out toward the side seams. Now along the top line of the horizontal dart that you transferred from your pattern piece, we're going to gather those lines from the side seam to the point, leaving thread tails on both sides so that we can pull them for gathering. And then pull those dart threads that we just created until the top of the dart fits the bottom of the dart. And then once that fits, fold the dart so that it's right sides together and pin once again through one dart leg and out the other. And do this for both darts. And then take the dress to your sewing machine and sew from the outside of the dart to the point, leaving thread tails at the point so that you can tie them in knots. Now I'm going to finish these raw edges of the darts on the inside using my serger. I faintly trace the vertical dart onto my back piece using a tracing wheel and tracing paper. And now I'm going to pin and prepare both of those darts in the same way as we did for the vertical darts on the front piece. Sew both of your back darts from the top to the point, tying the ends in a knot and then pressing those darts to the side seams. Grab one of your back bodice pieces and we're going to take it to the sewing machine and gather the bottom edge. Using the longest stitch on your machine with about a quarter inch seam allowance, sew from one end to the other along the bottoms of both back panel pieces. Place the bottom basted edge of your back bodice piece right sides together with the corresponding back skirt piece. Gather the top edge of the back bodice piece until it fits the top of the skirt piece. Once it fits and the gathers are distributed evenly, go ahead and pin in place. And do this for both sets of back bodice and back skirt pieces. Sew your back bodices to the back skirts at the waist seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then finish your seams. To prepare for installing my zipper, I'm going to finish the entire back center seam from top to bottom for both back dress pieces. The pattern calls for a 16 to 20 inch long invisible zipper. I'm going to open up my invisible zipper and take it to my ironing board and press open those coils so that they lay flat from top to bottom. Do this for both sides of the zipper tape. Now that my zipper is prepared, I'm going to place the left side of my zipper right sides together with my left back dress piece. I'm going to place the very top of that zipper tape in line with the zipper notch that I transferred for my back bodice piece and pin in place. And then continue pinning that zipper tape down the center back. Now using your zipper foot or an invisible zipper foot, so close to your zipper teeth from the top to the bottom of the zipper, as far as your presser foot will allow you to get to the bottom of that zipper. Now that our left zipper tape is applied, go ahead and close your zipper and then place the right side of your back dress right sides together with the right side of the zipper, first aligning your waistline seams and then pin in place. And then continue pinning the entirety of that zipper tape all the way down. And then you can open up that zipper and then sew your right zipper tape in place just as we did for the left side. 
Now close that zipper once again, and we're going to pin together the center back seam from the bottom of the zipper to the bottom of the dress. Place both sides of the back dress right sides together along that center back seam, and pin in place from the bottom of the zipper to the bottom of the dress. I'm going to start sewing the center back seam from the bottom of the zipper, still using my zipper foot for the first few inches so I can get my needle as close to the end of that zipper stitching as possible, and then switching back to my regular foot with a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way to the bottom of the dress. Then I'm going to press my seam open. Place your front and back dress pieces right sides together, and we're going to pin both of our side seams from the underarm seam all the way to the bottom of the dress. Sew both of your side seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then finish your seams. For my back button loops, I'm going to cut a strip of scrap fabric on the bias, measuring one inch wide. My strip is about 10 inches long and I'm going to cut that down into two strips later. I'm going to fold this strip right sides together and then sew along the raw edges with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to turn this loop right side out. The length of your button loops depends on your button size. You just want the loop to be big enough for the button to pass through, plus seam allowance. I'm using 3 8 inch buttons and I cut both of my button loops to about 2 inches long. Now I'm going to fold my button loop in half so that the short ends meet, and then I'm going to place it at the top of my back left bodice at the notch marked for this button loop placement matching the raw edge of the button loop with the surged edge of the bodice and pin in place. And then I'll fold my other button loop in half as well and place it about three quarters of an inch down from the upper raw edge of the bodice and pin in place. Now I'm going to take my button loops to the sewing machine and baste both of them in place. Place your front and back facing pieces right sides together matching your side seams and pin in place. Sew the side seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and finish your seams. Now to finish the bottom edges of my facing all the way around, I've gone ahead and surged those raw edges. I've also pressed up the raw edges to the wrong side of the fabric by a quarter of an inch all the way around the bottom edges. Now I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and edge stitch close to those surging stitches all the way around the bottom edge. Place your front facing right sides together with your front bodice neckline and pin in place. Also pin your facing right sides together with both armhole edges. Now we're going to sew the facing to the neckline and the armholes, starting and stopping 3 8 of an inch away from the top seams, so that our shoulder seams remain open. So starting 3 8 of an inch from the top edge, sew the underarm seam and stop 3 8 of an inch from the shoulder seam on the other side, allowing the same 3 8 of an inch space for your neckline as well. Now I'm going to trim those underarm and neck seam allowances by about half. And then I'm going to clip into the curves of the neckline and the armholes, clipping to the stitching line but not beyond. Now I'm going to pin the facing to the back bodice at the neckline. as well as down the center back just as far as the end of the facing. 
Now using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew that back neckline and that center back just to the end of the facing. Again, starting my stitching 3 8 of an inch away from the shoulder seams so that the seam allowance of those shoulder seams are still preserved for later. Now trim those center back corners and turn your facings to the inside of the garment, poking out those center back corners. Now we're going to pin together the shoulder seams of the outside material only, leaving the shoulder seams of the facing free. So now that I have that seam allowance of the outside material pinned together and the seam allowance of my facings are free on the inside, I'm going to sew the outside fabric shoulder seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, careful as I sew not to catch my facing. And do that for both shoulder seams. Now that our outside shoulder seam is sewn, we're going to tuck the seam allowances of the facing shoulder seam to the inside and use a needle and thread to slip stitch that facing shoulder seam all the way across and do that for both shoulder seams. Now for the back slit of the dress, I've gone ahead and pressed those seam allowances to the inside by 3 8 of an inch. And I've done that on both sides. The instructions say to use a needle and thread to sew an invisible stitch to attach this seam allowance to the center back. I'm just going to use my sewing machine to secure that seam allowance, sewing it from the waistline seam all the way to the top of the neckline, sewing close to those serging stitches and doing this on both sides. I've taken the bottom of my dress to my serger and I've finished all of the raw edges that way. I'm just going to turn these serged edges to the wrong side of the fabric by half of an inch and give it a good press all the way around. For the most professional finish, you're going to want to hand stitch a blind stitch all the way around the bottom so that your stitches will be invisible from the outside. I'm just going to take it to my sewing machine and edge stitch close to these serged stitches all the way around the bottom hem. And the last thing to do is to sew on your buttons across from your button loops on your right back bodice. And now your dress is complete. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.